I've been rehearsing for, um, I am subbing in with a, a friend's 80s band in a couple of weeks. Uh, there's a show I'm putting that I I put together with some friends of mine that I'm in all of the bands that night unintentionally. Oh, excellent! But I'm I'm in all of the bands. Is this the one at and, the Oriental? Uh, it is the one at the Oriental. Oh, good! It's I'll the be one there at the early Oriental then. Theater. <laughs> yeah, uh, they go on at seven, and I think that uh, yeah, I, I apparently I ended up poaching uh, that band from another opening slot at another show. And I went over and I apologized to the headliner for bogarting their their opener, and they're like, "It's not your fault." I was like, "I'm sorry," um, but yeah, apparently there was some some mix up in communication. Better opener. Yeah, so yeah, well, I uh, well, what kind of eighties music I, is it? I mean, the first fucking song is uh, "It's Not Love" by Dawkins. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I cannot wait. That is like one, the, dude. Probably the first pop rock song I wrote. I actually named my first publishing company after this. It was called Dreaming Again. Oh, uh, and I totally really? ripped it off from Dokken. Uh from Dream Warriors. No, or no, what? <laughs> from that album. And it, I, I think okay. I ripped it off from Alone Again, which is like this Ooh. cool, like diminished E. <laughs> it's one of those songs, yeah. but it's on the same album yeah. that has "It's Not Love." The left just stand in. Yeah. God, I love that song. Yeah. That's a great Fucking song. Chicken I picking in metal. Bleep, 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 I've, uh... bleep, 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 bleep. I've pl- I've played it just fucking around for like years. Yeah. That 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 pick and riff. Like I've played it just fucking. So I've never actually de- divin dove divin divin into it. Divin. Anyway, Dovin, he I have killed an English two degree. Guys. It's fine. He <laughs> killed. Two- <laughs> Perfect. Shout out James um, Acaster. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, so I just I've been diving into that like so it's that kind of stuff. There's a heart tune in there, and the closer is some uh, really fun one for me to play, which I will not give away. You have to come to the show oh, to, hey. expl- to feed. That won't help anyone on the podcast, joy. but yes, it will help. It will for help me. nobody on the podcast, <laughs> but those of you. Well, by the time this this will come out, probably before the show comes out. Just so if the, barely, those people yeah. that are looking to travel, there are people that are looking for a weekend in Colorado. And they want to go to a kick-ass rock and roll show. Welcome to Two Shots and a Royalty Check, brought to you by Venmo, your money, your move, and Liquid Death, murder your thirst. Let's get back into it. Probably skip this one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. It's going to be a really then fun there are night. a plethora of shows for you to choose from. Yeah, there's there's a lot of shit going on there. No, go to roof. the O. The O. O. The O. Show them your O, o face. Oh, oh! ASMR time. Oh my! It's so weird because we know the people that own this place and we know the people that run it. But it's called the Oriental Theater, okay? Yeah. And there's yes. some question as to whether that is the proper nom- nomenclature, nomenclature that we use these, these days. days. I don't think even that's the preferred nomenclature, not, dude. But I don't think it's like even dis- it's not even like describing somebody or something. Yeah. It's an old relic of an old movie theater yeah. that became a venue, and they've tried to uh, rebrand it as the O. Yeah, but yeah, nobody around here calls it that. The other part, no. yeah, yeah, and it, it it came with this absolutely stunning like neon sign on yes. the side of the building. That our friend spent a fucking exorbitant amount of money to to restore and trying and get this place back to some type of uh, you know vintage glory, and um, then you know he's kind of in a battle over whether that term is offensive or not. Yeah, but it's um, also historic in yeah. the neighborhood in North Denver, and mm-hmm. and that is an area that has been very gentrified. I mean, these are all things oh, anyone yeah. in a music scene knows about. It's like, there's an yeah. old club, and you're like, oh, that's cool. And it happens to be, like, from the, I think it was from the 20s or the 30s. Something like, like that, originally. yeah. It's been, a, it's been I, around. I remember interviewing them when they were first remodeling it. Yeah. And putting in the new sound system and changing yeah. the lighting and mm-hmm. that was a sound system ago <laughs> like that was yeah. before they did the last one yeah. and and learning about the history about how people used to go there to you know in in very fi- in their finery and watch movies yeah. on the silver yeah. screen and 
I mean, that was two weeks ago, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But it's a yeah. fantastic venue, especially for artists. Um, yeah, they they treat you well. They do treat you well, and Andy. Uh, uh yeah um one time i played there and they have this uh this like you know alka frolic punch i call it alka frolic because you will frolic after yes. consuming the alcohol um and uh i have a song uh that i put out many 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 years ago called colorado sunrise it was right when that song came out and andy changed the name of their their uh sunrise punch to Stu miller's colorado sunrise punch and i think the <laughs> same batch is still in the jar <laughs> To which we immediately filed a lawsuit. Yeah, uh, because of course. That name you can't is do that. <laughs> yeah, that name is totally trademarked. And um, yeah, it's like it reminds me of. Uh, did I ever tell you the pickled egg story? Like touring with uh, uh, one of the bands and our lead singer. One of his hangover foods was pickled mm-hmm. eggs, and there was a gas station that was on the way out of town. Oh God! That um, like I think it. I think by our third trip through this city, there was a sign next to the jar that said, "Do not let this man open this jar." Totally. In his fucking face, with a picture it. of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, also, well, you didn't have oh. to buy gas for the van for that. Oh. <laughs> it was the grossest smelling thing I think I've ever uh, seen go into a human. And well, I've been on the I internet for a while. Clubs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Still top yeah, five. Was, top five. Definitely it top was, five. It was like, yeah, it was, it was horrifying. And it smelled. I, it's like, why do you have it on the counter then? Well, it's a novelty. All the kids go, ooh, look at the pickled eggs. It's like, it's not that much of a novelty that it needs <sighs> to be there. <laughs> I know. I look Burn at it. those things like. Like all the mo- like when you see that stuff in a movie, whenever you see like yeah. a glass beaker jar <laughs> with fluid Full in it. Full of eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, like flubber or whatever. Like I, I'm the trying word to think fluid of movies, is just you gross. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen them and they're oh, yeah. on a shelf and it's like, that's yeah. not edible. That's, that's an experiment. Edible. That's, like, yeah. that, that's something we're going to come back to in a few Somebody's years and see what happens. Somebody's playing God back yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, that's I've just to see a whether or not it grows its own eyeballs. Or another eyeball. Hint, it will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's even like Futurama with like the heads in the jars. Oh, God. I love that so much. Like that Nixon show. And shit. Okay, controversial take on Futurama. Ooh, ooh. Go. I like it better than The Simpsons. Wow. Is that a controversial take? Yeah. Why? Uh, well, it's, I mean, it's a different kind of show. Yeah. Same creator, but same for writers. The Sim, not graining, right? And like, it's, yeah. uh, but for the Simpsons, and probably David wouldn't exist. X Cohen, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I can okay, better than the Simpsons. Oh yeah. yeah, okay, all right, yeah. I I enjoy it more. I think it's um, I think the Simpsons can be a little too acerbic. Yeah, which which season do you mean? Season forty three or season <laughs> six or season? <laughs> but I mean, I I yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a hopeful. Did you call bastard. the Simpsons acerbic? As in, I did too high minded. <laughs> N- I no, it's not. I did. I meant. Um, uh, that's not what acerbic means, is it? I don't know. Let's check it out. I, okay, Kelsey, get on it. She's been useless the last few weeks. Uh, yeah, but, sharp and forthright. It's uh, his acerbic wit. I, okay, I mean, I the must, archaic uh, is is tasting sour or bitter, but that yeah. is that's different. But yeah. That's the that's the that's the ver- the version of the word I knew. So that's why I was like, it seems a little. Oh, okay. So you're 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 archaic. I'm I'm, I I'm old. <laughs> Apparently, using the archaic Latin version. I'm, I'm of using that the Britannica thing. dictionary. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that shows how long it's been since I looked up a term. Um, no, it's it's mostly about the comment of style or speaking. He's a Serbic wit, mm. which is somebody mm. sharp and forthright and i think it's more cutting than it is cunning but it can be most often sarcastic was there a t in that what wow was... look at look at me as a writer talking this way um oh. i think it's more like sharp-witted than it is smart so it's more like sarcastic Tangy. satirical yes um kind of like t- smart like, like, tarsh, like a lemon yeah well, okay, so like it, just under that dictionary dot com, so maybe maybe you're right in this. Sour oh. or astringent in taste, lemon juice is acerbic. Uh ha. Harsh or severe sorry. as a temper or expression. Oh. 
Oh. So sour in taste. I don't know. Collins Dictionary has it first. Sour in taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm on the Oxford, so I don't know what the fuck y'all are doing. Uh, Okay, so if you're if you're writing, are you a fan of the Oxford comma? Yes, absolutely. Me too. I think it because I think it reflects speech patterns more accurately, especially if I'm if I'm reading. Uh, like, cause I like to, I hear things in my head like most people do yeah. and I, and I hear it in my voice. So the Oxford comma puts that pause in there and I'm a massive fan of that. Otherwise I'm like, where did that last part end? Yes. Um, and I've just seen it too often where the misuse or the lack of the use of it can result in a confusing statement. I agree with that completely. And so like in that case, then let's always make sure that. The communication is clear. Yeah. And I think I, for me as a writer, and I write a lot of different things. So I write for business stuff and then I write yeah. decks, but but then I also write stories and scripts and things like that. And Who's I decks? think they're like stories and novels and scripts and short stories, all that kind of stuff. It's so important that you write in a voice, like that yeah, you do write as somebody would hear you speaking it. Anthony Bourdain was like so good at that about if you read his stuff, you could kind of oh, yeah. absolutely hear his voice throughout it. Okay, yeah, and absolutely. I think that especially someone more of our age uses commas in a way to pause a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah. Instead of, instead of segment out two or three things, mm-hmm. it is kind of a pausing mechanism. And then in, when you use it as an Oxford comma in the three... Um, yeah. Then it's uh, to me, it feels more like a pause punch, like yeah. this, this, and also this, yeah, which is separate from those two in parentheses. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like <laughs> that's that's the way I see it. So that's I why. have another weird habit. Like if I'm uh, if I'm typing something, so say I'm typing Worcestershire sauce, and I'm typing Leanne Perrins, right? You and are I'm typing comments, Worcestershire sauce. Okay, Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. So so I'm typing the brand Leanne Perrins. I will put that and for the brand as an ampersand. And then have the and after the Oxford comma be the word and to stop any confusion that I'm, I'm, you know, for that exact reason. So that it's read as one thing rather than, you know, reading the and reading the other and as something completely different uh, as as an additional thought. It's just it's a way that I when I read it, I read the ampersand is attached to those two things and the and as an additional um, piece of the sentence. I don't use them. I don't use an ampersand that way. But what I found interesting about that is I know visually that yeah. Leon Perrins is an ampersand. An ampersand. Like that's yeah. the brand. Yeah. It's not an and. It's not A and yeah. B. And so yeah. that's why I like that you used it because you used sort of the trademark brand name. Well, <laughs> let's let's just say that I use but like, something. You know, Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah, but there'd be a weird comma in there too. Um, yeah. But I mean, like for not for not necessarily for the brand, but like say I'm uh, uh, so uh, say I'm listing three things. I go okay. You've got experimentation, research and development, exploration, comma, and then straight to market or something like that. Research and development I will have as one piece with an ampersand to denote that it's one thing. That's interesting. See, and you're, I don't you're know still where dancing that came around from. it because R and D yeah. is very much a shorthand for that, which has an ampersand. Yeah. But but like uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Where, I'm trying to think of one too. I can't right now because I haven't been drinking enough coffee yeah, today. Something okay. and okay. So like, well, no, I was gonna say Mork and Mindy. <laughs> guys, hey, can you guys make the show a little older? Yeah, exactly. Um, By the but, way, we've been fucking everywhere in the last twelve and a half minutes. I would like to point out that's uh, that's okay, that's kind of I know. Welcome to enjoying. English talk. Welcome, yeah. But I think it's I think if people are writers and creators, I think it's important for them to, you know, to I don't know. I like to find out different perspectives on how to do things to 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 communicate as clearly as possible. Exactly. Music is communication. Yeah. Songwriting is communication. Yeah. Agreed. Maybe mixers are like, I don't give a fuck at all about this. Yeah, but, but we you don't know care what? about okay. them anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shots fired. Shots fired. Huh? How you feel, drummers? Did you see that? Yeah, <laughs> mixing, exactly. Mixing engineers caught astray there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, We're not drummers, just drummers escaped unscathed. <laughs> All the, the podcast is relatively relatively short at this point in time. It'll it'll come back to bite them. Didn't you just have a dinner with an excellent mixer? 
I did have a dinner with an excellent mix mixer. engineer, mix engineer, producer, yeah. drummer, keyboard player, bass he, player, extraordinary. I don't know if he's a keyboard player, but he's definitely one of the finest musicians and humans I know. I'm I'm really fortunate to be surrounded by artists and musicians that are such oh, as yourself. Oh, thank you very much, man. I, oh no, I got there. I got there to compliment you. I complimented you. Did you hear that, Evan? We were complimented. Um, that's my Family Guy reference for the day. Um, uh, yeah, like... Family just, Guy, better than Futurama. Boom! <laughs> I would say... Uh, okay, let's... let's, let's uh, I would say Family Guy is... Tied. He's inconsistent, but yes. I just think there's more... I think there's more quotables in Family Guy than there is Futurama, and I think that's I agree, what matters. But that, that's not the barometer of a great show for moi, no. necessarily. It is. I, I, I think that those two are on par, but I think Family Guy is more inconsistent than Futurama is. I think Futurama, when they choose to make it, because that's kind of the thing. It's like a BBC series. They're like, you know what we should yeah. do? We should go ahead and make another one. Totally. It's been 30 years since the last one. And you just they just make it again because they fucking want to, you yeah, know. Yeah, and the fans want it. Yeah, and the fans want it. But um, yeah, where I was having dinner with my friend John Jeffers. Shout out to uh, Adam Land Studios. The guy is absolutely fucking brilliant and one of the finest humans you'll ever meet in your entire life. Um, and we were just we just had dinner and you know sat and shot the shit, caught up. We haven't caught up in a while. He looks amazing, by the way. He nice. has lost a fuckload of weight. He's snowboarding. He's taking care of himself. You know, he's just. He's just crushing life, and I'm like, "Tell me your secret." And he's like, "Stop being an asshole." And I said, "Okay." <laughs> was that? All right. What's number two? <laughs> All right, number two, because I can't do number one. I was having a conversation with uh, somebody yesterday, in which I told them one of the reasons we started this podcast is we we were sick of having the same conversation over and over again for free and having nobody listen to us. So we may as well put it out in public. That's right. <laughs> Shout out Liquid Death and Venmo. Um, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> I was wondering about that the other day. I hadn't, we hadn't. I'd had a couple of Liquid Deaths the other day for, for at a gig and was like, huh, I wonder if they're still doing stuff with us. I'm they're glad to know they are. They're doing stuff. We're, we're good. And we're good. It's, again, good. all of this is going to depend on Depends. video. By, at our age, Eventually. we should be getting sponsored by Depends. Right. And some <laughs> sort of in vitro or Sky Rizzy. Uh, yeah, something Sky like that. Rizzy, some, some boner pills and uh, yeah, whatever it is. Get I'll an erection in the bath in I'll your bathtub. Em. I love them. Um, speaking of which, boners or the pills? This is yeah, both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, carry that on. That motherfucker's a Joey Chestnut right there. He put anything in it. Uh, anyway, turn um, around too fast, knock the vase over. Happy thirtieth. This is the 30th oh, episode. Dirty 30. Of Two Shots what? and a Royalty Checked, otherwise known as Two Shots Music Pod, which mm. is not confusing at all. Um, no. But, like, I, so I'm constantly oh. reminded by the person over there behind the glass. 90% <laughs> of podcasts don't get past episode three. Oh, my God. That's like 1.8 million quit. Wow. Of the 200,000 left. Mm hmm. About 2 million podcasts, basically, is where it starts off here. Yeah. Um, of the 200,000 left, 90% will quit after 20 episodes. Wow. That's another so 180,000 stupid or tenacious. <laughs> yeah. Which everyone, there's a bunch of people listening like, yeah, I remember 20. You guys maybe could have called it a day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we should see what 20 was. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. You want to uh, hop on on the whichever uh, one of your we we should hop on the website. I don't even know which one it is. Well, I've got I've got like <laughs> they're a, all they're numbered. It's fine. They are numbered. Things are numbered. Let's see what number twenty was it's for all of you, long time listener, first time callers. Um, number twenty was strikes and music fucking up a big show. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, so that was way back wow. about the strike. Wow. Wow. By the way, that wasn't too long ago. Yeah, that, that was, was not uh, too long ago. It was in August. And we're, wow. we're now in what, January? I don't know when this comes out. I don't really know how it works. This is going to come out uh, when we say it comes out. That's right. Thanksgiving, that's whatever. What I mean. um, yeah, Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And so to be in the top 1% of podcasts wow. in the world, numbers, the world, baby. Yeah. Um, you need only 
publish 21 episodes. Wow. Your competition is not the 2 million podcasts. Oh, it's wow. the 20,000 podcasters who didn't quit. Oh, that's dear. that's that's the note that I was sent here. Wow. So that's wow. To, that, I guess that's to make us feel better. So, so Kelsey has been doing something. A I was lot a of sh- research. Lo- yeah, she's like, wow. what, looking at the megaphone numbers. She's wow. it's like, hey, do you understand how many people are listening to this on Amazon Music? And I was like, no. <laughs> I didn't because yeah. I didn't know that that's still a thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a little shocked. I tried it with an too. artist last year and it just like completely failed. Like I thought. Yeah. She had she had a song that was like very much in like hot AC sort of yeah. adult contemporary. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, these are people yeah. who probably use that. Yeah, Amazon Music. I don't know. So. I have another friend that's on The Voice this season. I just found out. I was like, uh, what? Really? You know, speaking of, yeah, uh, my friend. Can I tell uh, you? Okay, yeah. last night we're watching. Okay, this is this all has to do with what you just said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we're watching but regular we're TV. I'm like, why is regular TV on? What is um, regular TV? Like network shit, you know? No, oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Again, when that you see sense. the Sky Rizzi ad, I'm like, oh, God, I'm on regular TV. So, um, <laughs> I. but what it was is that, um, so my gal, her mom called her and said, uh, do you know that, like one of our friends from where you grew up and it was in mm-hmm. Pasadena in, in California mm-hmm. years and yeah. years ago, um, is on the new bachelor. Her mom, the golden is bachelor. Her mom is 80. Yeah. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, yeah it's some show called the golden bachelor. I'm like, Oh, I've heard about this. Yes. From yes. some Gen Z friends who are like, are trying to promote it being like, mm-hmm. no, that's good. Like old people should have sex, but they're happy. <laughs> That yeah. there's this new show called The Golden Bachelor because it won't be so sexualized as the other oh, Bachelor shows have been. Yeah. Like they're fucking each other on the side, and and then yeah. he sends her away, and she doesn't get the rose, and everyone's you know crying. Um, so I know a little bit about it, but I don't yeah. watch The Bachelor. I don't watch yeah. any of this stuff. Yeah. Not to say it's bad. I understand. Yeah. It's, a, it's not for me. It's a sweet tooth for a lot of people. Yeah. But anyway, so somebody we know is on The Golden Bachelor. <laughs> So just put that put that in perspective. You're like, yeah, a friend of mine's on The Voice. We're in the music yeah. industry. That makes yeah. sense. And my yeah. story is a friend of ours is on The Golden Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> Watch and to see be... if you remember what she looks like at 78. <laughs> uh, if you accidentally Google Golden Shower Bachelor, be sure Different to clear show. your browser Different history show. Great immediately show. afterwards. Great show. Great show. Great show. Um, okay. But it's so funny because... We, you know, it gets to like the beginning, yeah, and it and it describes the guy. He's seventy one. It says seventy one year old father of two. Oh, wow! Why would you put that? Like when you're seventy one, like father of two, like that just doesn't seem. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. know why they put that in there. He's a he's a father of two, and he has sixty two jet grandchildren. I know, but like, yeah, his father his. <laughs> His two kids yeah. could very well be 50. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so it's like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, when you I think father, really you think kids, and I'm like, eh. I really hope that those are both, that his kids are under 10. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. That'd be hilarious. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Once again, he's been taking the Introvic or the uh, Sky Rizzi, whatever. <laughs> yes, Sky Rizzi. Uh, um, but so, uh, per your point, there was a commercial for The Voice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and see? Tied it together. And it was a chick playing Can't Find My Way Home. Oh. Is this the person you know? No. Okay. I, it's, it's not. I don't remember what she's saying because I, I, uh, I just found out about it this morning. And I don't, I don't watch network television very much. But no. I did, uh, did last year because my friend uh, Morgan Miles, who I played with for a, a little while, shout out to her and my buddy Leo Zayas, who got me that gig. Um, you know, we played, we played a couple, couple shows together. And I remember being very, very drunk around a fireplace, and then she went off and did the voice. And was and she, I can't remember who she, what team she was on, but she was she she got she think she placed third or some shit like that. Morgan did, yeah, and she was fucking amazing. She's she's incredible anyway. And this year, um, this woman I worked with um, with the Artist Institute in uh, Nashville, not the Art Institute in Nashville, but the Artist uh, Institute that I was helping run in Tennessee. 
um, this woman I worked with, her name's Caitlin Quisenberry. Um, she's a uh, badass and fantastic and, uh, she is team Reba right now. So, ah. uh, yeah, things are, uh, I'm like, uh, it's always fun to see my, uh, my friends get some, uh, some good stuff. So, yeah. Well then I'm sorry for what I'm about to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because, no, okay. Lies. So one, I were, I had, I was working very closely with an artist when that show Supernova was on, remember Tommy oh, Lee yeah. did one of these? Yeah, yeah. Tommy Lee did. Didn't that wasn't that the one where they were putting together a supergroup? Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And she was on it, and she got in, and I was consulting on the contracts. Oh, that's the other part we have not and talked about. The but yes. contracts are so bad on all of them, and this was one bad for who? Michael, who are they bad for? Original songwriters. And yep. artists, um, like, you know, notoriously Kelly Clarkson had a horrible deal with 19 where they yeah. basically owned her for two albums and made her do, like, sneaker ads and shit, and you can look all yeah. that up. But Carrie Underwood it worked had the out same for thing, her, think, but yeah. it doesn't work yeah. out for most. And yeah. she, she, her talent rose above it. Yeah. Um, but, like, it's the, the contracts are so bad. They own everything. So, like, you're in yeah. the condo, and you're talking, yeah. and you're kind of writing a song or singing a song or whatever, and they own your likeness of that. They own the yep. master of it. They own, like, mm-hmm. if you're writing something, everything you wrote within the show, like, yep. became, like, part of their publishing for, like, two yeah. years or four years. Like, the yeah. reversion clause was horrible. Um, yeah. But... Okay, you don't so even own the songwriting. I'm always do you? against like those original shows, even though I would prefer you go on an original show and write music. Yeah, because yeah. I, I the other stuff is karaoke. It's cover music, and I yeah, yeah I get it. Somebody can bring a house down by doing a Queen song or whatever. I get it. Yeah, but here's my problem: why I can't watch those shows. I'm watching this like little commercial of yeah. this chick doing "Can't Find My Way Home" on a keyboard. Mm-hmm. And yeah. everyone, the four judges are just like, oh, oh, my God. Oh, oh, it's so good. And I am just sitting there going, this is, it's okay. Yeah. Which is my problem with all of them. Like, unless they are that fucking good, yeah. I just don't care at all. I'm like, okay, great. You sang in church. You could do a little show. And like, yeah. and in my mind the whole time, I'm like, this has so little to do with whether or not you're going to be successful in the music business, whether or not you can sit up here and sing. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. the other thing is like your temperamental, like how, what your temperament is like, how you're going to work with others, how you write, how you're going to work in the studio, just whether or not you're going to kick ass on, uh, you know, promoting your music and do you have yeah. a creative vision and how are you going to grow in three years? Like it's all mm-hmm. of the other stuff that I'm yeah. interested in for longevity, not yeah. just becoming a star this year that won a contest. Yeah. That like, okay, so who won last year? I don't know. I don't remember Two who won years last ago. year. Nobody too. fucking knows. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, like, there's, yeah. it's the same thing with like American Idol. There were like a few years where it mattered, and then the rest of them, nobody remembers them at all. And, yeah. and like, that's my whole point is that, okay, it's a moment in the sunshine. But my problem is, is I know I can't watch that show because I will just sit there like a fucking hater, and it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I, and uh, I shouldn't be that way. I know it's wrong. I know I should just celebrate. There's a musician singing for other people, and I should just love that. Well, I think it depends on the person. I think you and I have a different opinion of what success means at this part, at this point in our lives. Um, I was having a conversation the other day about how I am grateful for the fact that I no longer have to be the face on stage to make a living as a musician. Yeah. Like, I actually really enjoy the fact that I don't have to fucking go and play until 1.30 in the goddamn morning to make my monthly nut, right? And there's, I, I think, a lot of the younger people like that is while they have they're, they're less risk averse, shall we say, um, they're like they're going to go out and they're going to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. That changes when you d- really start desiring some stability in your life later on, which is why you and I choose to do other things. But if I didn't give a shit and I didn't have a kid, you know, um, if I was just like fuck it, it's all about me. And it should be all about you in your 20s and early 30s. Yeah. Um, you know, absolutely, I would go out and be playing. the. I mean, I remember, like, playing all the fucking all over the place in my 20s and early 30s. It I wasn't know, until my son. but would you go son, on one yeah. of those shows? No. No. See, that's my thing. Is it's not punk rock either. enough for me. You I know? just see it as a contest, and 
it's very well, rare that your favorite artist, someone that means something to yeah. you, Kelly, move yeah. Kelly Clarkson out of this conversation, by yeah. the way. Yeah. And Carrie uh, Underwood. And by the Carrie way. Underwood, too. Yeah. yeah. Like, but like basically, somebody that does music that means something in your life and grows as an artist and all that, it's just yeah. rare that they yeah. come from a contest. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think the contest is uh I, I think it's about if you're thinking about it like it's like a competition where somebody wins, for me, if I'm if I'm an artist, I might consider it young when I was younger to to get the audience, right? I'll consider giving up two years of my life to grow my audience to the point that I can do kind of whatever the fuck That's I want. That's what Daughtry did. Yeah. And he, oh my gosh, have you heard he had some a of band the, before it and yeah. you know yeah, he snuck in there and basically stole audience for his band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they and were then, like, "That's know, cool. You be the guy." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I love Chris Daughtry. I think he's fucking killer singer. I mean, and then you've got your Adam Lambert as well. You know, but um, he just needed to be on TV though. Like that just yeah. had to happen. He needed. To, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like but, we needed yeah. him to be on TV and to be seen. And yeah, he's so talented, but, but he's so much more yeah. than just a singer. He's a personality oh, yeah. and a voice and an advocate Absolutely. and, you know, yeah. fashion guy. He like has, yeah. He has a perspective and an opinion and, a, and, and uh, you know, that's uh, like a brand. You know, some of the people that go on these shows, they're, they're skilled and talented singers. Yes, they sang in church, but they don't know who they are. And they're almost looking for the, the show to give them an identity and a brand. Yeah. To a certain extent. And that is something that, you know, uh, you know, when you sign that contract, I was talking with uh, I was talking with my dad yesterday about record labels, about how um, record labels did all the jobs that artists don't want to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so and that's the one of the problems we have with this oversaturation of artists is now there's nobody to do the jobs the artists don't want to do because the record labels don't want to sign them. because There's so fucking many of them. But like, you know, that's. The people that do stand out, who are outstanding in their field, uh, just sorry, I, the the gifts just keep popping up in my head. I apologize. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> um, like the people that are outstanding in that, you know, they're the ones that are succeeding on their own right, right? They yeah. have a they have a perspective, they have a brand, and they're probably their niche is probably pretty small, right? Yeah. Now, when you go buy a Foo Fighters record, you know it's going to sound like a Foo Fighters record. They're not going to stray too far from what they're their brand and their vibe is. That doesn't mean that Dave isn't doing a billion things in the background. Yeah. When you get a Foo Fighters record, it sounds like a fucking Foo Fighters record. Yeah. Because it has an aesthetic, it has a vibe, it has a brand. And I think a lot of the people going on these shows are looking for that from the public. Tell me what the public wants me to be so that I can be everything to everyone. When that is the opposite yeah. of what you should do in marketing. I think, you know, and the more I think about it as we've talked through it, it may be a good move to try to get on yeah. one of these shows, um, whereas in the past it wasn't. And here's why. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of people try to get on these shows because they think, I'll become known and then I'll get opportunities. Like, a producer yeah. will reach out to me or I'll get signed to a label. And even if this show doesn't work out, I'll have that tape. Like, yeah. I know. Okay, so, like, I know a gal that won the Mexican-American Idol. Oh, Wow. And okay. she is still killing it in the and like I worked with her on an yeah. early album, and she's That's awesome. just fantastic. Lives in Mexico. Has she had like she got a great sponsorship deal from like Soul from the beer and fuck and, yeah, you know different like things worked for that for her. Yeah. She's still doing very well. She had to be the but personality. She's talented. To do she that. always was talented. Yeah. Um, yeah. but she used the video of that. To basically mm -hmm. get more opportunities when her original album dropped. Hell and yes. She did meet a different producer from it. And so, you know, but back in the day, if like producers wouldn't work with a contest person. But now I think there's probably yeah. a lot that are like, you know what? No one's knocking on the door. <laughs> like, yeah. This is kind of yeah. easy work. Like, okay, I can see yeah. she has this range. We'll reach out to her yeah. and try to do maybe one or two songs. Yeah. Uh, do you think that the producers don't reach out because of the fact that they know that everything that that person creates for up to, is it up to three years? I don't remember what the specifics are. I've seen a couple contracts, three to five years after they're on the show. Yeah, yeah, usually. Or something like that. They, that that show, you can't put out a record without them having a piece of it because, you yeah. know, 
Yeah. So like that I, for me as a person that likes to, I'm either like, <laughs> I'm going to get my money, bitch. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, as if you Family think about guy. it from a business perspective, uh, yeah, I didn't, there's no, there's no good production Futurama reference right now. No. Call back. <laughs> um, um, so, but like I'm, I either as a producer, I'm investing my time on the front end or I'm, I'm getting, uh, recouping it on the back end. Right. So right. I'm either getting paid here or I'm getting paid on the other side. So I can either, you know, own a piece of your songwriting and potentially publishing, or you can pay me the full rate up front. And then I, then you're on your own. And I've gotten my gotten what I think the value of this is, and moving on, I don't have to do anything. Um, so, but like the second half of that piece being actually owned and uh, operated by a multinational conglomerate. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, you just pause. touched on it because yeah, I can tell you what the game is from before when I was oh, yeah. looking at the contracts and stuff. What yeah. I realized is that it's a defensive NDA. And what yeah. that basically is, is that we lock you into possibility for mm-hmm. three to oh. five years to yeah. keep you off the market. Yeah. It's, not to, it's yeah. not to lock you in to get you to record, to get you to go on tour. Maybe there's going to be one mm-hmm. or two, Kelly Clarkson, Kate, yeah. you know, Underwood. Like, there's going to be something where they're like, okay, they're down. They're going to put the work in. We're going to yeah. work them to death for three years. Um, yeah. You know, whatever. They yeah. can do that. But the rest young of enough, them, they can do the, it. Yeah. The, the ones that are like maybe diamonds in the rough or yeah. they're a little too young or maybe they're a little too old. You want to keep them off the market. And so think about this. So yeah. American Idol was on Fox, but the mm-hmm. show was produced basically in conglomeration with 19 records. Yeah. Because yeah. of Simon Fuller or whatever. And so Simon Cowell. 19 had you. Yeah. If you're on that show. Now, The Voice yeah. is the same thing. NBC yeah. is with Universal. NBC Universal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Runs the voice, and the deal is you get a record deal with Universal if you win the voice, and like a hundred thousand dollars, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, you know, that's that's the way Disneyland. that works, and that basically yeah. Universal is locking you out of being able to be signed to a Sony sub or a Warner sub. Mm-hmm. Like that's it's yeah. it's business. Yeah. So everyone yeah. that you I, see on the voice who could have yeah. made it. You know, all those, mm-hmm. the 15 or the 10 or whatever that don't get buzzed in. I don't even know how the show works. Someone's like, he yeah. has no idea what he's talking about. But like, I'm just saying the other ones that you see on the show that have a reel on network TV, they just met Carson Daly. They just met all these stars It worked with this, you know, <laughs> singer songwriter and all that. Is yeah. it Carson Daly? Am I right? I, I don't. <laughs> Do you know? I don't. I think Carson Daly you. is on it. This is okay. all, by the way, all of this is from the commercial I saw last night. <laughs> oh, so you're probably right. Carson Daly. I love that Carson Daly's still fucking doing something, though. He's like on morning network TV. Like oh, in, yeah. Isn't he on, I like, mean, we the... don't watch this, but like the National Today Show or America, Good Morning America. He's on one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Niall Horan's like on The Voice right now. Yeah. Hell, yeah. There's all I these people. I love him. Um the voice Carson Daly. I love Niall Horan. I think he's. I, I. I am a big fan of the One Directions and all of their solo projects. He is on the Voice. Yeah, you're right. He oh, earns five one. million dollars a year from it. Did you also uh, know Carson Daly runs a record gonna... <laughs> label <laughs> with Bam Margera? Makes... Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, Four fifty six yeah. Enterprise Entertainment. Wow. Yeah, so hey Carson. I, I know Carson went through some personal things that came out of it and that's awesome. Yeah. I think he had a Yeah. A thing. Yeah. But I like it fr- does. He was. He was on yeah. the Today Show. I was right. Yeah, that's right. See? Yeah. Man, yeah. the old brain still got it. It's still Kids. kicking. It's still so yeah, kicking. I don't know. I wouldn't go on him if I was younger. Yeah. Just, but I can see the lure of it. Of like, well, you know, especially if you're like from a small town and you're not yeah. really, you know, you're not blowing up. Maybe you've played a few gigs, yeah. but you're like, I get yeah. to go to L.A. for six months, and you know, yeah. can't hurt that I met Reba McIntyre. You know, like yeah. it can't yeah. hurt. She had a that sitcom. I, I know what a studio's like and meet the makeup people and yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. see it. Get a little bit of the taste of what it's supposed to be like on a certain level. It I just feels like of, that's the yeah. fish hook, though. 
Yeah. You know, because well, it's like, okay, well, so it didn't work out. Well, great. I just met this producer, so we're going to go to lunch at the marina. And, yeah. and then they'll be like, oh, but, but, but you might want to look at that contract, kid. Do, they, do you know if they, <laughs> they, they have to sign the contract even before they walk into the blind auditions, right? Oh, before they give you the ticket to come out. Before they yeah. give you the ticket to come out. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I thought. So, like, it doesn't matter if you make it onto the show or not. You no. sign a contract that says that you are on hold with them. If you get them. on the show, yeah. Yeah, it could, so it, is it starts you get with on your likeness show. for the auditioning. Oh wow! You still have to give up your likeness, and you've just done a performance on TV, and like so. I mean, I remember there was somebody that I know. We're way in the weeds on this, you guys, but yeah, that's I do okay, remember though. that I spoke to someone who actually was in a publishing deal. Like oh, so, wow. they're you know, I'm I'm a music publisher, but like they're in like a major music publishing deal. So they were signed. Mm-hmm. There was a thing, and so they, unbeknownst to their publisher and everyone else, they got pretty damn close on one of these shows. I think it was American Idol. It may may have been one of the ones where you could write music, whatever one of those ones were. But there, oh, it was American Idol and they were, they were uh, showcasing their original song. Well, that original song's listed on BMI and it triggered royalties on a public performance. Oh, wow. And, you know, and at those times, American Idol is doing monster numbers, 24 million, yeah. like, you know, a ton yeah. of numbers. Yeah. And, and then that, and you know, for those of you who know how this works, that means that that triggers, uh, when it goes into, you know, rebroadcast rights and into, you know, uh, when you get into the like hundred episode range and they want to, they want to get all the back episodes and play them on a different channel or mm-hmm. bundle them up for a streamer, you have to pay those royalties. And so most of them get like a deal with a publisher or two and say, you know, we want, we know that we're going to use your songs and this is the MFN rate. This is the most favored nation rate for every song yeah. that we're going to use. And that's why on these shows, if you look, <laughs> you will find the same publishing company above all of them because the master doesn't matter. It's the people yeah. singing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that way it's all cleared. And I would imagine if you're universal, you're happy to give up those publishing rights for your little TV show called The Voice on NBC Universal. It's just a small <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah. Small. I, you know, like speaking of, I had a friend of mine, and I, this is a, I've got so many thoughts on all this. Number one, I don't think that either one of us knew back then what we know now. And I think that the possibility of us being on a TV show at 22 without the knowledge we have now is entirely possible. So I also understand that, um, you know, we were also playing in a completely different marketplace for music 20-something years ago. Um, And we were both band people, too. We weren't like... We were both band people, yeah. You know, solo acts that needed a band behind us. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I had a friend of mine, this is, this is also probably 15-something years ago, who when she was, she was a teenager, an incredibly talented singer. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about right off the top of my head. I do. Um, uh, but she got signed to a major label deal, recorded an album, and then got shelved so she wouldn't compete with other things that they'd, they'd already invested way more money into. That's right. Especially a a like artist at the same age, if you've already put the money in them. It's so much easier. Just think about that. So say you invest in an artist who say, let's say 16 or 17. (laughs) And then let's say that that artist is a burgeoning songwriter. You're like, okay, she can write some things. We'll, we'll, we'll give her a line and a, and a percentage point on a few things. But like they've got the performance and the look and the personality and their parents are good and all of that. And you've put a bunch of money into that. You've already recorded, you know, three songs to give to the label to make sure it's good, right? Yeah. And then you find another one. Yeah. And she's pretty good, but it's a different genre. It's not going to be as big. You yeah. don't have the resources to really push two major young artists to try to blow them up nationally. Mm-hmm. And it totally makes sense to give the second one a hundred grand, two hundred grand, even in a in a upfront, and yeah. you give them an advance, bring them out to L.A., throw them into a producer room, and then you know take a few demos and be like, yeah, just not feeling it, and just slow play them, and like yeah. that hundred thousand is sunk in cost versus the three million you have on yeah. trying to blow up an artist, which is about what it takes. Takes now, about three million over a year. Yeah. 
through all of the tr- all of the things. Of course, yeah. you can blow up without that. But that's yeah. That was kind of a label blueprint for a yeah. young artist. If you want to get a young artist that's a, to get the tour buy in, to do a full radio campaign, yeah. to try to do the run around the night shows, like all of that kind of stuff. That is basically what all of the PR, what all the management, what all the money costs. And mm-hmm. It's about three million, and you know that you can make six back. Yeah, that's the math I've heard. And I, I would like to point out that none of this is meant to. This is not. Don't dissuade you. <laughs> don't not to dissuade you, but this is a. This is to be a tale of. You, know, you just, you know, when you go into these things, know what you're going into. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It means that. If you go into it knowing what you're like, okay, I'm letting go of a little bit of control for a period of time. You need to know how much that how much time that is. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and if yeah. it, if you believe that it's worth it to build the audience, to you know to utilize this thing and, and you know to get yourself to a place and actually have a little bit of, you know, to, I will admit, like you know, having things on, you know, I mean, we've got a we've got a country singer in Colorado who was, uh, I believe, he, I can't remember, was he on? Uh, American Idol or The Voice. He was on one of them, and he still advertises that. Yes, he does. Yeah, like constantly. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, but it still has cachet. It still it still matters that you can say that because that you know, like oh, he was on television. It's like that as seen on TV aisle at Target. You know, like yeah, yeah I want to make a microwave hard boiled egg. <laughs> yeah, Shit. and that's so, okay. Just be just be aware of what you're going into. If 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 it's as a strategy feels like it might work for you, fucking go for it. Get that glory. Get that. Take that money. You know. Um. You know. Go and enjoy the experience, and you know, have a fucking rock star time doing it. You know. Yeah, and 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 listen. You know, th- it may not be something we watch. Yeah. Um. But. You know, Bert Kreischer points this out all the time that, like, to Tom Segura, who doesn't watch network TV either. But, like, he points <laughs> it out. He's like, look, there's a lot of real America that still watches regular TV. Yeah. That's why he still does a bunch of that stuff because his fan base yeah. is very much in that. And, yeah. like, I just looked up the numbers for last week. The Voice did 5.8 million. Wow. Uh, like, just the other night. And it was just behind Fox. Well, Fox did. On ADL, ALDS coverage, you know, like playoff yeah. baseball. That's yeah. where you think all the old people are watching, right? 3.4 yeah. million. That was only wow. a point seven in the demo. And yeah. so, like, and by the way, the voice dipped sharply week to week. So that 5.8 yeah. um, was like 16% off. But, like, it wow. was still Dancing with the Stars, 4.7, Big Brother, 3.1. Yeah. And you're like, oh, wait a minute, in a country... Of basically 200 and some odd million adults, 350 yeah. million people. Yeah. Five million? I mean, yeah. it's a lot. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot. And that's, yeah. this is the math we're telling you about, right? Like, if, if yeah. you want to go on one of these shows, okay, that's who you're looking at. Five million, you're one of eight. Eh, maybe you get yeah. 20% of those people to be interested. What do you mm-hmm. have? Like, I would say, so, like, if this was a, as this is like a a consult for someone that wanted to enter one of these. I would yeah. say let's get you into the studio right the fuck now. Let's get yeah. five songs done that you yeah. own completely. Master yeah. publishing. All of it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So then if you go on one of these shows and you blow up, you can have back catalog they can't have a piece of. Is that in the contract they can't have a back catalog? Well, I mean that that's a negotiable. Oh. The rest of it, the future thing, the NDA, the sort of we've got you locked in if you agree to be on the show, that's yeah. fine. But that's a negotiable. They may want half of it over a certain amount. You know, yeah, they may want like half licensing for that period of time. Fine. Yeah. Because then yeah. it's in their best interest to try to get their 50% out of your publishing. But, no. but yeah. like, you know, for the most part, I don't think they would, they would be like, well, what? You've got what, a thousand fucking streams on Spotify? Yeah, we're good. We don't need that. Yeah. But you blow up. Hey, you might get a hit. Yeah. And so that's yeah. what I would say is if you're going to go on one of these, one of the ways to protect yourself is get a catalog early prior to going on. So you at least have a negotiable. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Before you go, go make a fucking record you own. Yeah. And just an yeah. EP, just something. Yeah. But like Five. get get a few and at least something you've co-written on. 
go ahead and co-write yeah. with a producer or whatever. But like, yeah, you got to have some you got to have some skin in the publishing game on it, and then own the master, and then uh, yeah. you'll at least make some money. So if they cut you early. And they're like, yeah, well, your career's over for... Like, think about that. This is my problem. You're 22 years old. You're just starting out, and, like, your band's done gigs for a year, maybe, and you're starting mm -hmm. to book for the next year, and you're like, yeah. but you're a hot front woman or something, and they're like, hey, we want to, you know, you should go audition for The Voice or whatever, right? Yeah. And you get on that, they're going to take away 22 to 25 or 7? Yeah. Like, fuck, that's when you need to be... That's when you're going to yeah. have, that's when you're going to screw up and have a bad breakup and a bad drunk night. And yeah. you know, I'm going to get all my good songs there. You might have a divorce <laughs> there. Drink. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're, you got all the energy in the world so you can record all night and get up and go work yeah. and then play a gig. Yeah. Don't take that time away from yourself. I don't know. Don't do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree. So that is that a, where we that stand a, on it? If you do I it. Think, Get a back catalog. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, I think that's a great have an input. outside lawyer because there's probably some bad shit in there. Oh, yeah. I I mean, even like the number of times this week. I mean, I've asked, I asked you about something this week, and and I the first thing I said to them before we got into the, some of the, the the contractual language we were talking about was, do you have a lawyer? <laughs> God, especially for this question. Yeah. Because it was international. It was there's international. Like different laws yeah. that... It, yeah. Applies to. I was like, I can tell you kind of what it is here, but it's usually not that anymore. This contract might be from 1998. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, but. Um, well, so many yeah, label was, agreements. Well, I, never mind. Sorry. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they but still anyway. have phono records on all of them. Everyone I've seen. Yeah. yeah. Phono yeah. records is still in there and downloads. Mm -hmm. It's Ugh. just this language on the sales side. Yeah. But but again, it's come back because people are yeah. selling some vinyl. Yeah, and you know, like Which that is, is in Harry Styles' contract too. Well, that yeah. matters. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Breakage so, on I mean, vinyl a, matters at that level. But uh, having a having a a a professional who is well versed in entertainment and music law is is just is you know you just have to do it just to protect yourself. Somebody, you know. Like that, just can like, hey, yeah, let me pay you a couple hundred bucks to review this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. See, this you is know. where I come in a lot of times. I always think because some of the music attorneys I've worked with or that I know yeah. are very they're they're big time. Like they work with big yeah. big people, but they yeah. also do the new person being signed into a yeah. back catalog licensing plus fifty percent of you doing the next EP with us. Yeah. And that also goes into a feature using the other artist from another label that's already signed. Yeah. There's a yeah. bunch of crap, producer points, all that. Yeah. And I think one of the most valuable things is kind of what I do is I'm usually yeah. in between the artist or producer and the, the lawyer that is on the label side. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are two lawyers usually that go back and forth. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you have like a lawyer that's still going to execute everything for you. But, like, to pay them to understand, like, a lot of people will just come with a lawyer, you know, like, their mom works mm -hmm. in real estate. <laughs> and it's like, oh, geez. And she's like, yeah, I know a lawyer. Don does contract work all the time. It's like, okay, does he know no. about at net receipts? Like, do you yeah. know what the fuck you're talking about? <laughs> you know? Well, why are they getting 14% uh, on a royalty rate? That makes no sense. I know. None of it does. <laughs> none of it makes any but sense. But so, like, I come in where I shape deals because i yeah. know the points but yeah. like i'm not a lawyer i'm not going to write up the contract i don't execute the agreement but but yeah. i think you need someone who actually especially on the publishing side like the recording side's a little bit easier yeah but on the on the publishing side you really need someone that like can shape what that deal looks like and yeah usually young artists don't fight like they're like oh, i'm being offered a million dollars you know and it's like yeah but for what yeah. You're know, like, well, yeah. I don't care. It's a million dollars. I'm like, you're going to care. <laughs> yeah. In 25 years when you're like, yeah. I'm 10 years away from a reversion clause. Why yeah. is that not written in? <laughs> Oof. That just, that, 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 that hurts my heart a little bit. But you had to deal with some of this stuff like last year with a couple of artists as well, didn't you? Yeah. Or the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I you know, signing with a major labels. Deal and with that. another signed yeah. artist that was going to use a song that was 
back catalog that was going to be signed by a label. Yeah. So the, the deal was all working together. Label wanted to sign the artist, wanted to uh-huh. sign the producer, had to sign wow. the oh, publishing right. yeah. of both of them because they both had publishing on it, had to license <laughs> the master. Oh, my gosh. And then on the artist side, separate from the producer, what is the deliverable and the timeline for you to be signed with us? So we yeah. want to see an EP in two years, say. It wasn't that. I, I won't... I'll, I mean, I'll tell you, it was six songs, like within a year, and wow. with, I think it was a one plus one, so it's an option to pick up. So yeah. if those met a certain amount of money, yeah. then they would probably pick up another EP deal. Wow, um, cool. But it made sense for the artists because they wanted to work with different producers than the producer they wrote this hit album with. Yeah, and yeah. Um, that producer didn't understand why they weren't a part of the record deal because they're like, I created the sound, man. And they're like, that's what you're buying. You're buying. I mean, that's, that's what ran up 50 million streams. And there's like, uh, or or the artist. Yeah. You know, or a little bit of both, but the label didn't want to sign the producer. Mm. But they've got enough of In the midst of all this, they wanted to use a previous song with a different signed artist as a feature, meaning they were going to take 30 to 50% of the song. Yeah, because she she was gonna I can say it was a she she was gonna do a feature and add mm-hmm. a line, yeah, and so it became everything was contingent upon that because that was gonna run probably ten million Ooh. streams. Everyone knew yeah. it was gonna go, yeah, and that's cool. Then that fell apart. <laughs> yeah, in the midst oh, of man. all of this, wow. And by the wow. way, one of the main things that fell apart for all of you... Okay, now we're deep into the weeds here on music industry. I know. For those of you that have not fallen asleep... <laughs> one of the reasons why things fell apart at first was because there weren't fucking split sheets. Split sheets. Gotta call that. Yeah. So, like, to buy the back catalog, which was holding up this artist from getting well over... It's, I think it was closer to $5 million. But for getting this artist signed... The back catalog deal had to happen for that. We had to make sure that the bass player didn't have writing on it. And wow. because, you know, labels aren't going to fuck with that. Like lawyers and labels are like, no, no, no. They want it locked down. And then when you're, if you're trying to chase it, if you think a million dollar deal makes anyone answer the phone any quicker, I'm Ugh. telling you it doesn't. If you yeah. think it makes them realize how to use a sign and get it to you in three hours, they do not. Yeah. <laughs> like, do it now <laughs> while everyone has plenty of time yeah. and you can text them and remind them but so yeah i'm i'm dealing with a little bit of that right now i had a i had a friend of mine out in uh in another state reach out about a, a record i produced i have no i have no skin in the in it in the master or anything like that because it was a younger artist and he reached out to me and said hey i really like this song i played it for a guy they want to know about the possibilities of a sync placement for it. Yeah. And I said, let me go ahead and check in because when I produced it with them, I gave them a step-by-step instruction manual on all of the shit they needed to do to get this song ready for that type of opportunity. Musicians don't read. Well, I bugged and I bugged them for about two weeks afterwards because it is a band. And uh, the I'm still... (laughs) <laughs> waiting for an answer on whether or not they even signed up for a PRO. Um, and, you know, like, and I said, get the split sheet done. Just do, just do that first. And then, you know, we can add all the other information once you get all that sorted out. But get that done and get everybody signed up. And, you know, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not going well because it, it, they are, they are significantly younger. At that age, they're thinking, they're not thinking about the future because you don't think about the future when you're 20 years old. No. Right? No. You think like, I'm going to live forever! And, you know, and that's just kind of how, you know, you go and you go on tour like that. And But I'm like at this place where I'm going, hey, guys, I'm letting you know that this is going to matter someday. Yeah. So please sort it out. And whether you and, – and the people that we've seen have long-term success in the entertainment industry understood that fact early on. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So there you and go. And that if you're, if you're writing a song with someone, you're married. Yeah. Unless yeah. you buy them out, you can buy Get them the out. Get the prenup like, before. You yeah. have co-written a song forever. Yeah. 
you yeah, know, and prenup. that's, that's, uh, that's quite a place to be at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, as long as you, I mean, like I've always tried to maintain a certain degree of, um, I don't, I don't set fire to bridges behind me unless I absolutely feel like I have to with regards to, you know, work and that kind of stuff. Personal relationships, who gives a shit, right? But, you know, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but, um, you know, with regards to work, I always try to leave graciously. That's the, I mean, and I try to do that in general because of this fact. I am in a relationship with these people yeah. forever. It doesn't matter who I'm touring with or who I'm playing with, you know, or working with or writing with. I am in the relationship. And so, like, you know, even when uh, we've had people we've worked with that have have been a little um, difficult, shall we say, <laughs> I always try to leave in grace, you know? Okay. Sorry you feel that way. Uh, good luck to you. Thanks for the so long and thanks for all the fish yes. kind of thing. So, yeah. you know, yeah. So I think we've, uh, I think we've beaten this horse. Um, There's so much more horses. to talk about. Horses are this so, is why we do this. If you are yeah. still with us, God bless you. You're in the music industry. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, Love horses. Don't want to beat them anymore. <laughs> oh, well, we don't need... I mean, that's all the topics. That's, yeah, that's, that's I'm, everything, I'm getting right? the rap, the break symbol over here from yeah. Kelsey. It's, she's, yeah, so yeah. She, she's threatening to slice your throat. The, like we'll move to the, okay, she's yeah. saying... She put up a piece of paper with a Sharpie on it said, Sink, sink. of the week! Get yeah, to the sink. damn sink, sink of the week. Sink. Sink. Week, week. That was a hell of an old man rant, by the way, I'd like to point out there, right there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> old man rant. Old sink man of the week. rant. Sink of the week. <sighs> um, you want to start? You want me to? Um, I just recently finished off the David Beckham documentary on Netflix. hey It is fucking great. I really enjoyed the shit out of it. I am, uh, I've, you know, tangentially been a fan of his for a long time. Not a Manchester United fan, but, you know, fan of David Beckham as a, as a person and as a brand. And, you know, I know he's had his challenges throughout his life. Um, but, uh, there well, was first, a really first great, among them first, is the way he looks. I mean, he's, I mean, he is, whew, he, I mean, good, even good now Lord. he's stunning. He's a stunning looking man. Challenges. I want to touch it. And his wife is gorgeous and his kids are gorgeous. And my God, whatever, you know, like whatever, you know, um, they are, they are all beautiful, beautiful people. Um, the beautiful and their teeth people. are great for being British. What? The beautiful people. The beautiful people. Whoa. Um, that man is that man is canceled. We are never allowed to mention him ever again. David Beckham um, documentary on Apple TV. That's what you saw. Not on Apple TV. It's on the Netflix. It's on the Netflix. It's on the Netflixes, oh. which is the which is the streamer I currently have. I have that in Hulu um, right now. So yeah, I, st- I know you still don't understand this, but you I'm know trying. the other ones are off right now. Um, but it is, it is a, it's, you know, four episodes are all about an hour long directed by Fisher Stevens. Um, you know, really, really, really great documentary. And in it, I think it was in episode one, they had here I come by the roots. Oh, nice. Banging away behind some, some epic, you know, uh, football highlights. Um, and, uh, it was, uh, it, you know, like just. It's a very high energy documentary, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, four episodes for long, you know. Liz Gallagher, the soup on that, uh, just fucking great. Really, really um, enjoyed it, and I love that he, you know, watching it. I love seeing people that are like, yeah, I've done everything I can possibly do in the in the world of soccer. I'm going to still go and try and do something else now because I love it so much. And that's the kind of, I think that's the kind of energy we have in the music industry as well, Yeah. which is, I mean, I've toured, I've had records, I've had, you know, award possibilities. I've never, you know, uh, I mean, I don't think that I've made enough money off of it. That's, that's, that it feels good. And I've done just about everything you want to do as a musician. Now I'm going to go try and do this over there. And I just love watching, you know, the stories of people that are similar, especially the people that are as successful as he has been. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Still killing so, it. And still I know absolutely now. crushing it. Hey, I have something yeah, to add Miami. to that. I saw an interview with yeah. Fisher Stevens on that and yeah, yeah. about how it all came together. Like, are you a fan? Did you, you know, did you follow Beckham? He's like, he didn't, he didn't like Beckham. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, he didn't search him out to do the documentary, you know, like most documentaries, hmm. a, a director, yeah. You know, gets yeah. gets something in their craw and has to go after it and do the documentary about it. It's not yeah, the way it happened. Yeah. Apparently, David yeah. Beckham and Leo DiCaprio were talking, and Leo DiCaprio had seen something else Fisher Stevens had done, 
and said, oh, wow. you know what? I think he's the guy to do this wow. documentary on you. He doesn't love you. He does. So he'll be fair and yeah. tell a good story. Oh, I I, the, yeah. the Water Will Rise or something, I think, was one of the ones he did. I think huh. that's what it was based on. So Leo DiCaprio called him. Yeah. And basically pitched him the idea to do the documentary on David Beckham. Wow. And then they met and it was kind of over COVID and he got to know more of the story. Of course he knew who he was from like a, he follows football and stuff, but he knew yeah. who he was, yeah. but like he, yeah. you know, had to go down the whole story with him and then, you know, got to know him and know the, wow. no posh. Yeah. Victoria. So yeah, I yeah. thought that was interesting that it wasn't like Fisher Stevens was like, I need to tell the I David Beckham make story this. that it was yeah. Leo DiCaprio, which, by the way, is such a look at me Louie moment where it's like, oh, <laughs> Leo DiCaprio called you to ask you to do the David Beckham documentary, which pulled yeah. you away from your show that you were shooting, you know, from <laughs> Succession or whatever. <laughs> That's right. He was he was doing Succession, wasn't he? Yeah. And he was just in Asteroid yeah. City. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fisher Stevens also notoriously uh, played one of the more racist uh, roles of the 80s in Short Circuit. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, the documentary, the David Beckham documentary is, is fabulous and the music is great. Love um, it. Love it. A lot of really great. Well, places. as you and know, you, I am into the like sort of spy stuff. And uh, oh, yeah, there's been a show yeah. that has eluded me for a long time called Covert Affairs. Oh, yeah. And Who's it was on NBC, apparently, back in the day. Oh, and dear. it pops up on those, you know, if you watch this kind of shit, if you watch sort of spy stuff and Jack yeah. Ryan, that kind of stuff, you'll always get the sort of, you may also like, right? Yeah. I get Thank those, you. and I'm like, yeah, I've seen every single one of those. <laughs> and yeah. one of them came, kept coming up that was Covert Affairs, and you could not see it anywhere. It wasn't really? on anywhere. Huh. And... It was like you could buy it. I'm like, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to rent it. That's stupid. I've yeah. got all these services. Boo. It's bullshit. So yeah. it just showed up on The Cock. Yeah. So we're back, baby. I'm watching The we're Cock back. again. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was just so happy that a show I'm actually watching is on The Cock. So I could mention The Cock over yeah. and over and over. You um, hopped on The Cock and found a covert cock affairs covert affairs on the cock um it's i look i just i love these kind of shows um piper parabo is on it Ooh. and she's she's fine y'all she's fine um <laughs> by the way she's also on billions right now but anyway Ooh. uh season one episode four they mm. use uh, a song from interpol called hands away Ooh, During good the song. wedding scene in the in Switzerland, and it is fantastic. Yeah. Now, if you love CIA kind of spy shows and stuff, this one is kind of cheesy. <laughs> oh, it was network, oh. so it's a little bit cheesy, but it's yeah. still fun. The performances are yeah. good, uh, but it's like her her right hand guy at the CIA happens to be blind. And yet he works on computers and everything. But and you're like, okay, that's kind of corny. And then you find out, oh, it's because he got blinded in Iraq. Yeah. Oh. And but he's still a super genius. I mean, it's all that crap. Peter Gallagher's okay. in it. But anyway, Ooh. here's another fun thing about this. All of season one episodes um from Covert Affairs are Led mm -hmm. Zeppelin named songs. Fuck yeah. I've I love seen it. all of episode one. And there are no Led Zeppelin songs in it. So the first one, like, well, of course, there's Pilot. Huh. That doesn't count. Yeah. But Walter's yeah. Walk, Southbound Suarez, No Quarter, In the Light, Houses of the Holy, Communication Breakdown, What Is and mm. What Should Never Be, Fool in the Rain, and I Can't Quit You, Baby. And, like, it's hilarious that they're all Led Zeppelin names of songs as the yeah. episode names. But they couldn't yeah. get a Led Zeppelin song back in the day. Because this huh. is like 2010. Yeah. So, gotcha. 2010, Stu. That means someone 13 is walking around right now with bubble gum in their pocket. <laughs> no, <I'm> just. <laughs> so, that's my sink of the week. Covert Affairs, Hands Away, Interpol, uh, Soup with Stacey Wall and McCarthy. There well you go. done. That's a good choice. 
Um, th- I've enjoyed today. This has been a lovely music business discussion. So I appreciate it. It has. All of that. Yes. Thank you very all much. Let's wrap this sucker up. Make sure to email us two shots music pod at gmail.com. You can follow us mm-hmm. anywhere you follow people at two shots music pod. Thank you so much for listening on Apple. Thank you yes. so much for listening on Amazon. And we know most of you don't care on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thank you, all you YouTube people. What's up, YouTube? Yeah. We're killing on YouTube. Thank you. A lot you of listeners. Too. Hey, hit that subscribe, hit the bell, all that thing. And we'll, yeah. we'll try yeah. to be better on YouTube. I think we've been doing okay. Yeah. We've been doing okay. And um, do we, have we talked about when we're going to start maybe like putting up cameras when we do this shit? Not before the Norway episode. Oh, okay. All right, there. Because we got to get to Oslo. We're going to rip up Norway, like, in a yeah. good way. Rip it up. That's not the lyric, but I'm going to sing it. Oh, it's on the right. Come on, yeah. come All right, on. y'all. I hope you write a right. great song. You look good. Take care of yourselves. Love you all. Bye.